<laughs> Greetings, people. You know what? Um, we, we haven't been cooking for a while because I was cooking during lockdown and uh, basically I put on about four kilograms and <laughs> I had to stop cooking and start eating greens, just eating, you know, a plant-based diet. But I gotta teach Sashi how to cook. And today we're cooking soup. It's a soup day because it's only about 21 degrees in Melbourne. Um, and I'm cooking a fish soup with the snapper, all right? Um, and Sashi, what are you cooking? Ah, oh, so Sashi's cooking chicken soup. And we're using chicken wings for this one, right? So basically, um, Sashi, what's going into your soup? Pumpkin, potato, sweet potato, chicken, potato, chicken, chicken, chicken choco, choco, turnip, turnip carrot, 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 potato, potato, potato banana, spring onion. Right, and you got spices going in? Yeah? So, we got some spices and herbs. Even in Sasha's dish, we're gonna put a scotch bonnet pepper because we're not gonna break it, we're just cooking it for the flavors. And we have some thyme out of the garden some chopped up spring onions and Sashi what are these what are these little content what are these little, what have we got in these ones here so these are all the spices for the soup we've got some all-purpose a bit of garlic pepper uh, all spice so this is a grounded up pimento yeah if you get the pimento balls the seeds that's um that's probably the best better one we got some Cajun and of course, this salt is from the Himalayas. It's it's a hugging salt. You can hug it if you like. And uh, some peppercorns. And we're also gonna put in Sashi's dish. We're gonna put some chicken flavored soup. This is from Jamaica. Yeah, this is Grace chicken noodle soup. Remember that. In my dish, however, because I'm cooking a fish dish, I'm just gonna put some pumpkin also from Grace. You can get these from Roosevelt Distributors. Roosevelt is at Taste Jamaica in Geelong. So look him up if you want to get some of this stuff. All right, Sashi, so get ready. You, um, you're going to need water and you can have half of the pumpkin and sweet potato because it's a pumpkin and sweet potato cream. Cold water. Here we go. That one there. You can have half. Now, here we go. So, we got the pan ready. The chicken was washed. We have to wash chicken. Sorry, I'm Jamaican. I have to wash the chicken. I don't care what anybody say. We just have to wash the chicken. The chicken wash already. And Sashi, you can put that on the fire. Do you know how to turn on the stove, darling? <laughs> All right, you go do that. All right, while Sashi's turning on the stove, I'll see how long it takes her to figure out how to light the stove. Um, so I'm using the snapper head today to make my fish soup, and I'm gonna use the tail as well. But all of the cutlets, I'm gonna use to make a, a, little, a little curry. Just a little curry because my son Daniel, he likes fish soup, but he says it's not filling enough. So I gotta make him another dish and use the chicken, the fish soup as a, as a bit of an appetizer. Now when I buy my fish from the fish shop, I ask them to clean it and cut it into cutlets. But I can assure you, I'm gonna have to clean it myself because I can already feel like there is more scales than on the fish than when it was alive. So, we're gonna clean the fish now. I must explain, so the fish for the soup, the fish soup is actually going to be the last thing that goes into the pot. Unlike the chicken that has to go in first because obviously chicken takes about a bit longer to cook. And as a Jamaican, I like to cook my meat until it start crying out, stop cooking. So um, that's that's uh, that's why the, the, the fish goes in last, chicken goes in first. Cause fish don't take long. Time. As you can see, I'm getting so much scale off this bloody fish. 
Even though I tear the guy to squeeze, I feed him a little bit extra, give him a tip and everything. And this fish could still be swimming if it was on this scale like the fish needs to swim. Here we go. Look at that. Oh my god. Did I just swim? Hope I didn't swim. I'm gonna have to clean up this kitchen all over again before my wife comes home. Alright. Sasha, what are you doing? At the moment. Oh, why can't you be cleaning this fish anyway? Because what? You don't want to. Okay, alright. Fish is almost clean. So I'm a, I'm not a big fan of putting dumplings in my soup. I know I'm gonna get I'm not, I'm gonna get a lot of a lot of leaks from the Jamaicans for saying that. But I feel like you know I like my soup the day after as well, and I feel like the dumpling makes the soup go a little bit off the next day. So I would normally cook my dumpling and put it aside, and then add it to my soup when I'm ready for it. But uh, everybody else in my family likes the dumpling in the soup. So we're gonna put a little bit of dumpling in both of these soups. Um, we're just using this uh, White Wings Premium Flour and it's plain flour. And the only thing that's gonna go in it, really, is a bit of salt, just a pinch of salt. There's about, this is about 100 grams of flour, maybe 150. So a little pinch of salt because you just need to have salt in your dumpling, see? and water and that's it but Sashi before we do anything when you're gonna make my dumpling you have to double wash your hands even if your hands are clean already you have to wash them again and if they have fingernails I mean everybody have fingernails right but if your nails are long or they're even short I don't care you can't make my dumpling period they don't make that but wash your hands so Making dumplings, Jamaican way, is very tricky. You can easily spoil it by putting in too much water. It's very difficult to spoil it by not putting in too much water because you can't take the water out. And imagine if that's the only flour you have in the kitchen and you put too much water in it. No dumpling for you. All right, Sashi, you're making about 50 grams of flour to dumpling. Uh, and you need a pinch of salt, so just a little bit of salt, yeah, like three times that much. Let's do it. Jeez, your fingers are so little. When are they going to grow? All right, that's about enough. And your hands have been washed? Twice? Three times? Oh, okay. Wash it up there. Nah, no, I'm just joking. All right, here we go. So mix up the flour a bit to get the salt everywhere. Oh, your left hand is? Some sort of left hand is. Okay, you use your right hand. Your left hand is for picking up your water. Right. Unless you left hand. So just a little bit of water at a time. A little bit. A little bit. And you mix that in. I'm sure, I'm sure that some people have a some people have a some kind of a, a mixing tool in the kitchen that is electrical and pop then you can use it to make it grow but I can tell you something if you don't use your hands to make it you're not giving any to me I don't want it dumplings Jamaican way must be made by hands and heart I have to put some love into the thing you see me put some love into it Sashi 
looking good. That's looking good. There's mine. Still need a little bit more water. Careful with the water. A little bit at a time. And you mix that in. Get it nice and <laughs> it's looking good. So use your use your thumb. In Jamaica they say use your thumb. But I'm gonna say use your thumb because I'm learning some new words in Australia. Have I been here do you think? Oh my lord, 30 years. But you know, even though I've been here this long session, there's so many things that I still remember about Jamaica. And so many things that my mom said. Have you heard my little series of things that mama says? <laughs> I've been doing them every Friday. Mama says, oh no, 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 always keep the flow. I think you put too much water in. Oh, you didn't listen to the instruction. All right, okay, you know what? I think you put too much water in, and this is what can happen, people. It gets gooey and sticky and difficult, and you would just give up. But I'm not gonna let her give up, because guess what? We have the luxury of more flour in the kitchen. So I'm gonna show you how to correct this little problem, right? Put a little bit of flour in, not too much. Just like we put in a little bit of water at a time. Hang on, hang on. See mine? Mine is almost there, yeah? Let me correct this for you, darling. Well, here we go. Here you are, hand there. I don't want you to put all that flour in that I just pour in the pan. Just enough to get the right consistency going. Just use it to soak up some of the liquid that got away from you and got making dumpling is a hard thing you know whoa 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 Can I eat? making dumpling is a hard thing you know say so, hang on Sasha all right so I think we're I think we're good again so what we're gonna do now is there is a bit of an excess of flour in the pan but we don't want to go through trying to use it all up so we're gonna just put this in the compost put it in the compost bin and then we continue to, oh all right yeah there you go keep keep kneading away so now it's perfect but we don't just stop there now you start putting your elbow into kneading it. Elbow in. You can use both hands. If one gets tired, you use the next. Yeah, so did you want to hear some things that my mom told me when I was growing up? Like how she used to try to, to get me to behave myself? You want to hear? One of the things that my mom says, my mother, here what she always said to me. Ah, oh, the Pitney got to market twice. You know what that means? A child that does not listen always end up having to do the same thing over and over again. So, ah, oh, the Pitney got to market twice. You get it? You wanna hear another one? Okay, so this next one is What sweet nanny goat? I got to run them belly. You know what that means? Okay. So that means that the goat, the goat goes and eat all these things that are so nice to the taste. But in the end, the goat gets diarrhea. So we shouldn't be talking about that and cooking at the same time. But that's just really what happens. What sweet nanny goat, I got to run them belly. Alright, you wanna hear another one? Oh, mother always say, <laughs> mother always say, measure twice and cut once. You know what that means? It means that, teaching you. it means that you won't make a mistake if you double check. 
Right? So if you double check before you cut, you'll get it right. So measure twice and cut once. You have a better chance of making the right decision at that time. All right, I'll tell you some more of what Mama said during the course of the cooking, all right? But I think our dumpling is just about ready. This is how mine looks. Let me see yours. All right, what if we swap them? Can you tell which one's yours? Oh, hang on, hang on, try again. Which one's yours? How do you know? <laughs> hey, cooking should be fun, especially if you're cooking with your kids. Oh, but she's not my, you're not my kid. Oh, this is my granddaughter. And Sasha is, oh, I keep forgetting her age. She's, she's turning 10. I don't know if she's actually turning 10 because she's more like a 14 year old with some of the behaviors that she has. But, you know, Turning three. All right, so now we're just gonna make the flour sit for a few minutes, and um, we would cover it or put it in the fridge, but we're in a rush, so we're not gonna cover it. So, as I mentioned before, we're we're cooking a fish soup, but we're using the fish head and tail. So the um, the cutlets in the middle, there are three pieces. This is a big enough snapper. We're gonna make a little fish curry. And to begin with, we've got some tomatoes, onion, thyme, a little bit more thyme. Thyme and uh, some scotch bonnet pepper. And we're gonna put this on the fire and let it burn a little bit. Everybody cook their fish curry different, but we all end up with the same result. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna get that going for a little while. Um, the two soup pans they're on, they're just uh, boiling out to get the cream of the potato to come up on top and the pumpkin to come up on top. And then we're gonna start adding the rest of the ingredients. Um, with the uh, with the fish curry, we're gonna burn those those herbs for a little bit. Then we're gonna put the curry into the oil as well and burn the curry as well. And this one's gonna have a uh, a, a coconut cream base. So we're gonna add some coconut cream and this can go with rice or with yam and banana and dumpling, whatever you like. But um, yeah, just a little fish curry coming up. So we're getting ready with uh, the curry. Um, basically, this is about oh, 50 grams of curry and I'm using the Maharaja's Choice because you know the curry thing is from India, right? And so if the Maharaja likes that, then it must be the best one. It's a standard curry powder. I also like to, because of what my mom told me, I also like to add a little bit of a garam masala. So garam masala is also from the Indian shop. We're gonna add that in. And of course, as I mentioned before, it's a coconut, coconut milk base curry. In Jamaica, we would get a fresh coconut and we would grate it and squeeze out all the milk and use the, um, the extract from the coconut for this curry. But I'm lazy and I'm not gonna grate a coconut today. I just don't feel like it. And plus, I'm not cooking for myself. I'm cooking this for my son and he don't know the difference. So, or maybe he does, I don't know. But you know what else my mother used to say to me? My mother used to tell me, Lincoln, don't you know who for frighten? You know what that means? It means that people know who to challenge. So if if anybody is gonna challenge me, they probably have to think twice about it when it comes to the food business. So my mother would say, don't you know who for frighten? You know what else she say as well? What sweet you so sour are you? <laughs> I don't know what that one means. But one of the main things that my mother tells me that I never forget, she says, every dog have them four o'clock. That means today for me, tomorrow for you. 
If you dig in a hole for me, dig one for yourself. Also, when you're going up in life, be nice to the people that you pass on the way up because you will see them on your way down if you're not careful. So be nice to people every time. All right, let's cook, eh? Enough with the philosophy and the teaching for today. Yeah, you've had enough of that stuff from what my mother said? What did your mother say? Tell me one thing your mother said. Go on. Come to the camera. Tell me one thing that your mama say. Nothing. Well, your mom's right over there. Go get her to tell you something and then you come back and tell people. All right. It's time for a dumpling making lesson. So, all right. My grandmother taught me how to make these. And uh, I'm going to teach you as well, all right? So, I want them to be about that size for the soup. There's two kinds of dumplings that goes into the soup. You take a little piece off, like that, and you mold it into the palm of the end of the thumb. Have a look, have a look what I do with my thumb. I mold it, push it into itself, like that. Do that. Are you learning? Oh, I don't, I don't think you are. I can't see. Like that. Here we go, come again. Mold it, mold it, put it. Yeah, oh my lord. Look at that dumpling, eh? Look at that one compared to my one. Look how neat mine is. Let's go again. Mold it, mold it, mold it, mold it, mold it. You know what, Sashi? I'm gonna teach you a way to make, make another kind of dumpling, yeah? I'm gonna teach you how to make the spinners. I think the spinach is about your speed. Let me show you how to make the spinach. So you take a much smaller piece. Take a much smaller piece and you just do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just do that. Because, yeah. Just roll it and that's the spinach. These dumplings, making this one is what they call the married man dumpling. You know why? Because in Jamaica, they reckon the young ladies who are getting married, their dumplings always neat because they like to impress their new husband, boyfriend, partner with neat dumplings. See how they neat? Married man dumpling them on the You see me, I show you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me move this out of the way so you can. Whoa, you just spill something. That's fine. You can see. Oh, you're doing the spinners? You're doing the spinners? All right, you do the spinners, darling. The spinners is about. But, but keep watching though, because maybe one day you'll be able to make me some dumplings. Oh, yeah, let me check the fire. Check what's going on. Here. All right. That's beautiful, darling. That's beautiful. Keep making it, right? Keep making it, see? Break off a little, mold it. Mold it, mold it, mold it, mold it into the palm of your hand. Use your thumb to make it round and neat. And that's what's going into our soup today. Yeah. The cooking, this fish soup is for about eight to 10 people. So if everyone gets two dumplings, ah, uh, looks like everyone's gonna get one dumpling. Which is fine because it's not about the dumpling and as I said before I don't really like dumplings in my soup but you know everybody no come on look at these people <laughs> look at those those looks like like when you dislocate a finger what is that they look they look pretty messed up oh you know it's time to put the fish into that curry yeah, I can hear it sizzling like it's getting done. So let's get the fish. I'm still doing my dumpling. Keep doing the dumpling. Huh? What did your mama tell you anyway? Tell it to the people. Huh? What did your mama say? Never. 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 Never.
Seigneur, mon Dieu, ne set a sun. Never set a sun, or never let the sun set on an anger. Is that one? Never let the sun set on what? Oh, never let the sun set on an argument. That's a pretty good one. That's a very good one. And since your mother is my daughter, I think your mother could actually use that lesson as well. You know how many times the sun set in an argument between me and her? How many times do you think? Maybe once or twice. She's been a good girl. But you know what's a good one? That I tell all of my little girls and my little sons when they grow up. Look twice before you cross the road. Oh, don't cross the road. <laughs> don't cross the road. I think that's the best one. If you don't cross the road. No, what do you do? Make them all one. So, final stages of the cook, right? Um, now it's time to put in the veggies because the chicken is boiled, all the cream of the potato and pumpkin is risen up to the top. And the same with mine. So in my dish, in my soup, the only thing that is going to be different to little sashes, I'm putting in some okra. Okra is good, very good. So I put some okra in the fish soup, but there's no okra going in the chicken soup. So what's in your bowl? Like what, what are all these? You like okra, do you? Yeah, okay. We'll give you some of my okra later. Um, so there's chocos. These are the chocos. Turnip are the white bits. These are the turnip bits. There's carrots. Carrots. Everybody know what carrots look like. And then there's potatoes. And potatoes. Yeah. So I try to cut everything around the size of a dice. Oh, a, that's a pure, is it? Die. You know the dice, bone dice that used to play games. So I, I make them about the size of dice. All right. So. All the veggies going in now. Um, the meat's already in for sashes. After the veggies, we're gonna put in half of all of these spices and herbs. Um, and with me, I'm gonna put the fish in the same time with the veggies. So it's, that's going into my pot. And we're ready. So I give your hand sashi with yours. Cause it's kind of steamy and it and this is what you call a chunky soup. Everything is chunky. Yeah. Chunky soup. And now we're gonna um we're gonna get half of everything into our dish. Alright, so basically give me one second. I think I can help you with this. You can transfer half of everything into that little ball. So half of, except for the salt. All right, we're gonna cook with, we're gonna cook by taste. So we don't wanna put too much salt in. So if no, no half, we just do a little bit of peppercorns. Uh, you put half of the honey and salt. You save half for me, I get a couple of these. It's garlic powder, is it? Go half of that, I'll go half of the cajun for my dish. And you can have that. Yeah, I won't grab you. This is the this is the all spice, the pimento. Put a little bit in yours. Oh, you get one scotch bonnet. Yeah. And I get one scotch bonnet. I love this scotch bonnet. Yeah, you can have that, half of that, half of that, half of that. Half of that. Time. So we've got two kind of time here, right? This is a this is a Chinese time. I don't know why they call it Chinese time, but my friend gave me the plant and said it's Chinese time. So I don't know if it's different time of day. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, it's Chinese time, and this is just lemon time. So all right, now you put some in there, and this is spring onion. It goes into both the dishes, the, the soups. A bit of spring onion. Put the spring onion in yours, in mine, whatever it's there, we'll share it. And this is the last bit of spice, half and half. So, you can put that one in yours, and put this one in mine. Dump it all in. Well, 
Two separate schoolings, that one does, there's some fun. There's uh spirit but not anything splash you know what it's a Oh, I didn't get any salt, so a little bit of salt. Alright, let me have a taste to see where it is. What about these? Oh, that's, that's beautiful. That's nice. You want to taste it? You want to taste it to see if it's got enough of everything in it, enough salt. Never put the spoon in your mouth. Put it, cool it down and tip a little bit on your, your hand. A little bit on your hand, and that you can taste. Yeah? Nice, huh? I think it's nice too. Yeah, but remember, since you're not the only person drinking the soup, you can't just stick the spoon from the soup in your mouth. That is not cool. Don't do it. So that's the lesson really in cooking chicken soup and fish soup. The only thing we have to do now is put in put in the um, the noodles and we're gonna just put pumpkin in and we have grace chicken flavor and we've got the cock soup. Dean, get your mind out of the gun. Dean watches all my videos and I know what he'll be saying about this. It's in Jamaica the cock is a chicken. It's the male chicken around. So this is the cock flavor soup going in there. And alright, so now I've got to thank the sponsors, right? <laughs> Thanks to uh, Mr. Miyagi for the apron. I don't know where it came from. It was in my kitchen. I don't know who stole it. But thank you very much. Um, Grace. Uh, from Roosevelt Distributors. I spent like $200 in the shop, man. Yeah, I, I, I spend a lot of money in the shop because the stuff is good. And I only get a small bag of food. But anyway, I'll be going back. All right, so that's the final thing. I'll show you the results before we roll the credits. Thanks again to the sponsors. Dean, get your mind on the gutter. So, that's my little granddaughter's um, chicken soup. As you can see, it's bubbling away. That's the final stages. Final stages, all right? So, let's have some dumplings in there and all those colorful things and a bit of chicken. So that's good. And, uh, and this is my fish soup with the fish head in it. Yeah, and a few dumplings and all that beautiful goodness. It's just about ready as well. So keep that covered. And here is my fish curry. All I need to go with this now is a little bit of rice. And if you live in Jamaica, you might have banana, green bananas, dumpling, cassava, pumpkin, cocoa, dashing, all them something there. All those things. All right, so the, the, the meals are finished now. We serve a plate and get a taste test going. All right. So as you can see, this is uh, the end result. This is our chicken soup. With a couple of bits of chicken in there and uh, the dumpling. And this is our fish soup. They look very similar, but I can tell you they taste totally different. And there are the two scotch bonnet peppers. Don't forget to take them out and make sure they don't break in the soup before you take them out. Otherwise, you have to have a very strong palate to take hot and spicy scotch bonnets. Oh, and I'm growing these scotch bonnet plants as well in my yard. So if you live in Australia, in Melbourne, and you'd like one, sell you a plant with fruits on it in February and March and it's only four <laughs> I'm a sucker for promo I don't know why